Well, welcome back to uh, day number 10 of our 6th grade drawing project. This will be the uh, last video on this project uh, because I believe we have actually pretty much completed this project. Uh, what we're doing right now simply is coloring in the background. I've picked out a color, this aqua green color, because it's the opposite color of this red-orange color. If we were to see a color wheel, <coughs> you would see that they are on opposite sides, much like um, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock are opposites on a analog clock face. So, because these two colors are opposites to each other, and mainly the car down here is this red-orange color, the background and the their opposites they pop out against each other really well and so we're going to color in a checkerboard pattern um, on our background and if you had already gotten far enough to get an entire checkerboard pattern in uh, before the end of the project then I would direct you to pick out an additional color and then color in all of the blank spaces of the checkerboard pattern okay so and that would really elevate your grade too and just show a little bit more uh, uh, dedication to your work habits and stuff as well. So without talking that much, <clears throat> I'm just going to keep coloring. Some of these squares are going to be easy to color in, some of them are going to take a while. So we'll start up here at the beginning. Um, now if you are uh, keeping up with me, you've done a fantastic job. You've completed a project in 10 days, 10 sessions, that most uh, students take longer to complete. Furthermore, uh, about one third of the class never completes a project anyway simply just because they inefficient work habits. And so if you're keeping up with me, that means that you're spending almost every minute of our uh, video lessons here either making the artwork or learning about it and then applying that. All we're trying to do in art class, we have three learning targets. One is to uh, gain like understanding. So we always are attempting to understand the basic principles uh, behind every unit that we uh, are undergoing that we're uh, trying to learn about. And so in this case it's drawing. So you can understand the concepts and basic principles of drawing. And then <coughs> we uh, apply those. So the next one is like I can apply those basic concepts in a project. Application means that you're actually able to take what you have learned and put it to some sort of useful end. Um, a lot of students, and it's really strange to me, but they're really good at math, but they could not solve a word problem to save their lives. And a word problem is simply applied mathematics. It gives you a, a contrived situation that you have to try to uh, solve using calculations and mathematics. Now a lot of kids are good at the knowledge part, but when they try to apply it, they can't do it. So, uh, and then the third one is success. You can succeed. And meaning on an evaluation. That means a quiz and having your artwork graded and your work habits evaluated regularly. So, our, all we ever do in art class, and it doesn't even matter what the unit is, is that we try to understand, apply, and succeed on an evaluation. So that's all there is. Understanding, application, and success. So that's what I've kind of put together over the years uh, as learning targets for us, and they seem to have been working for many, many years now. So I'm going to stick with them. So if you're uh, wise enough to work hard in art class, you will be rewarded with a couple of things. First of all, personal satisfaction. Uh, secondly, the respect of your art teacher and most of your peers and uh, classmates. Uh, thirdly, you will have a really nice art project, which is a reflection of your own personal uh, work habits and skills and dedication. And then uh, you'll end up with a good grade in the project and the class as well. So. I, all of this planning and hard work and long attention span stuff has rewards associated with it. So all of our learning targets, if you focus on them and ask yourself like right now, what part of this am I, what part of this am I, which learning target right now am I engaging in? 
well there's the application but also we're gaining understanding as well because we are um, working with materials uh, that uh, you know sometimes don't fully cooperate with you and you have to adjust and overcome those things uh, adapt <coughs> so we're uh, learning you know certain things about putting certain colors next to each other or uh, work habits as you work along how to keep from ruining everything that you've spent so much time making right so uh, that's all uh, gains in your understanding so application of a principle really also um, results in a better understanding so all of these uh, three learning targets are interconnected they're not really an individual list they are a circle and each one leads you to the next one which leads you to the next one which helps you and it just is a continuous learning uh, cycle or a circle and uh, that's probably the best way to to uh, visually imagine it it's not really just uh, once you're you know you go through parts one two and three and you're done yeah well, not really and I think you may be finding that out but I'm very pleased with this project and uh, I hope you have had success with it as well um, we will be having an evaluation of this project uh, before very long uh, we will have to uh, grade it we will also need to do a quiz on the drawing unit notes and so those notes need to be available and uh, you need to have copied them down so that you can reference them on the quiz on the uh, day of the quiz uh, the, l the lecture on drawing and the notes associated with it that video will be blocked you won't be able to see it so you will not you would have no idea whatsoever how to uh, get the answers to the uh, quiz questions without having the notes at that point. And some of you may have experienced that in the last quiz as well. So if you struggled on the last quiz because you didn't have complete notes, the time to be taking care of that is now, not, you know, 10 seconds before uh, the notes are blocked, or the lecture is blocked. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to keep at it here. I'm going to have to resharp on my pencil. Okay, so a lot of people, how do you work on this? How do you just keep at it? And the answer is you just got, you're trying to form a checkerboard pattern. So a lot of people will go through and just tag portions of it so they don't get out of order with it. And then, let's see, this one will be next over here, and then this one, and then this one. See how they zigzag back and forth? And then this one here, and that one be white, and then see this one right here, and then this would be with this little scrap right here would be aqua. And if we come down here, we're going to go. If this is aqua, this is blank, but that little scrap right there is aqua. See how this works? And then if that is, then this is, and then this is, and then this is, and then this section is, and then this one would be which means that this one would be. See, and if, we, if you can visualize it right now, you'll see it's an aqua and white checkerboard pattern. So if you can get them all tagged in right, you can go and uh, address the smaller areas first, and then um, that really has a way of uh, filling it in a lot faster. And also, you know, it, it, that way you don't overlook details. Check this one out. See, this and this one are the same. So this one has to be colored in right there. But if you're a really kind of a systematic worker, then I would recommend not skipping around. I would recommend going completely from down the first column, and I did that myself, just so I don't get scrambled up. And then after that, you should go row by row, so that you don't mess it up if you're kind of a systematic worker. If you're more of a random worker, then you have to keep track of what you're doing so you don't end up with stripes or just a scrambled checkerboard that doesn't make any visual sense. Okay. And even if I do not complete this on camera today, uh, I will complete it off camera and have um, it will be attached to our drawing videos as well for the, the sixth grade drawing unit. This will become um, the sixth grade drawing unit. So you all in this very first video that are watching this are kind of pioneers in a certain way. I'm bumping the table. Sorry about that. Okay, let's see what we got here.
and I hope you're enjoying the lessons so far. This is the first time we've ever attempted to do anything really this uh, ambitious outside of the physical classroom and visual arts class. Um, and so, uh, although I have had a goal for some time of videoing my lessons so that they could be available for students who uh, miss uh, school or are, are new to the school district. Okay, now look. See, now this one, that pipe goes into the next square. And so it's these little details like this that if you're not paying attention, you'll just color right over top of it. And then the next thing you know, you wreck the logic of your picture. And at this point, working on opacity as well as uh, completion, because opacity is a is part of completion, you don't want to be bearing down hard on the pencil tip and then get it in the wrong spot because you will struggle to fix it. An erasing colored pencil is difficult and it's really difficult if you draw it very heavy handed uh, or you color it in. So, let's see, that's, that's why we do opacity. You have to be committed to making it right so that you don't mess up and, you know, you have to be committed to it. You get this far into a project, you need to be work you should be working at the peak of your abilities by now after 10 days of drawing and I think 10 or 11 days on the uh, design project and so by now you've spent a lot of days drawing and coloring measuring thinking all of this is part of artwork But this project has really been a success so far. And it looks like, you know, we're going to pull into the finish line here and uh, be able to reflect back on it, and it will be a success. Okay. And see these little details, like right here in this space between these sway bars. Okay, that is critical to trying to get sort of a three dimensional appearance to our uh, car and anything else that we're drawing because if you can literally see through there then you need to account for that otherwise uh, that's another thing we call a logic flaw it doesn't make sense and so people who know what they're looking at will appreciate it people who are not real close lookers of things they won't they won't even notice anyway okay but we should um, be able to move on to our next unit here shortly after we get our evaluation of our art done on the drawing unit and we evaluate our uh, working habits and also we uh, do the project and the quiz. So uh, we're coming close to wrapping this all up. If you're keeping up with this instruction, you're on the verge of complete and total success. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some of the photos uh, of these uh, automobiles as well. That should be fascinating to look at. Okay. Alright, it's coming together pretty quick. Let's see, what other uh, little partial squares can I get together with? I guess this is going to be the pretty much, well these in here too, so I'm making progress. I think I'm going to have to sharpen my pencil again though, ladies and gentlemen. You can really burn through a colored pencil like this on the background work, but it's critical. It makes the whole project look better. Plus it's a car. It kind of gives you that checkerboard, you know, uh, that checkered flag effect in the background. Okay, got to stop for a moment. Let's see what we got while, while I'm sharpening. You enjoy that. And we'll just keep coloring. Nice working point on there, but it's a little lopsided. Am I going to I going to risk it? I am going to risk it. Uh-huh. Oh. And the risk paid off. Okay, here we go. Back to work. See, all that was lost time, but I didn't snap my lead off, and so I'm able to get back to work right away. Uh, one of the biggest 
uh, biggest impediments that slows people down, keeps them from ever being able to get the projects done, is probably the idea that they uh, have to sharpen their pencils constantly because they just can't be happy with it being kind of sharp. It has to be perfect needlepoint sharp and then they do that and they either break it off right away or they snap it off in the pencil sharpener and they have to keep sharpening. And then they end up tired with blister on their fingers and thumbs. And they don't end up with any drawing and sometimes they don't even end up with sharpened pencils. So, you know, give it three or four twists in the sharpener and be happy with it and move on. And see, if I were, if we were in the physical classroom, I'd be walking around watching you all color. And if you weren't coloring, like, you know, right now, uh, and you weren't sharpening a pencil at the time that needed sharpening, and I hadn't noticed it, I'd chastise you. I'd tell you back to work. You know, how do you ever expect to finish this thing if all you're going to do is sit there and stare off into space or talk to your friend, who, by the way, is trying to work, right? So, and sometimes I'll stand at my desk if everybody's working and not disturb anybody and just watch students work and that's fascinating too I've had uh, parents and other teachers and uh, the principals walk into my room before when everybody was coloring and uh, I had to like you know shush them to <laughs> so they didn't break that spell because it's something else to see everybody in a room especially an art classroom productively engaged and uh, that's when you know you're doing it right as a teacher. It's because everybody is productively engaged in the creation of or learning about artwork. So, it happens more frequently than you may think in the Warner Middle School visual art classroom. We uh, use a, a, an approach to teaching art, or I do, known as discipline-based art instruction or art education. And all that really means is that we focus on the disciplines. And the disciplines in art are design, drawing, painting, and three-dimensional work. Now, as you get older, there would also be environments and stuff. There's a conceptual art. But for school, discipline-based art education is a very powerful way uh, to instruct in the arts and uh, it's also part of not just visual art there is discipline based arts education in all of the various creative fields meaning uh, music and uh, and video is very important when you're doing cinema or uh, doing movies uh, dance uh, these are just different forms of art or uh, creative arts but they have disciplines so uh, for instance in music you couldn't really fully participate in music if you didn't know how to play an instrument so one of the disciplines of music of course is learning to accurately and reproducibly on a regular basis play an instrument properly and so there's just disciplines that make things up knowledge of the musical system uh, in art, it's knowledge of the elements of art and the principles of design, which we did in our first unit. It's, you know, the disciplines. Once you know them and understand them, then you can apply them. So in a discipline-based art education program, which is like the one that we're in right now, is not about disciplining students. It's about teaching them about the disciplines in art. And uh, once you have your toolbox, loaded with those tools or those disciplines you can make almost anything you can conceive of and you will have the planning and, and, and project production skills in order to be able to do it so just like you really wouldn't be a very productive member of the band if you just tried to play an instrument with no knowledge <laughs> you couldn't apply that very well uh, you uh, would also be struggling in the visual arts if you had uh, no discipline knowledge. Uh, so you would like just be scribbling and stuff like a little child does. And that's perfectly fine if that's what you're attempting to do. But if you're really trying to make something meaningful, uh, it's going to require some planning. And it's going to require some practice, just like in music. If you want to make music, you've probably got to learn to play the instrument. And then you got to learn to work with others, too, if you want to be in a band. Okay, this is looking fantastic, see? So, we can uh, 
do the easy stuff first sometimes and it helps us, it leads us to a, a greater sense of completion more quickly. So I just want to keep at this because that's really about the only way to get it done is just to keep at it. And I think I may have taken on the final little uh, partial square there. So I think I'll probably go to this one next because it's got a little bit of a tire in it there. And uh, then I'll maybe push the production along pretty good there. So yeah, we're on the verge of finishing this unit and moving on to the next unit, which is painting. Our painting project is always been a huge hit with the 6th grade too, so we're not going to really paint any particular thing, we're just going to make a bunch of shapes. And then we're going to fill them in, of course, according to a discipline-based formula that educates you while it allows you to make a project. That's what all discipline-based art education projects are meant to do, is to apply the principles of the discipline so that you learn more about them. How do you apply them? And that's where our learning targets came from that I was talking about, it seems like 20 minutes ago now. But you can get a lot of work done if you can talk and work. That's great. But if you can't, or if the person next to you can't talk to you and continue to work, then you just got to be quiet and give them some time to focus on their work. And especially some people are just easily distracted, you know? And, uh,. Anything shiny in the classroom or anything that happens that breaks their concentration and they can't stay at their work. So sometimes you have to just leave people alone and focus on your own work. Uh, you know, be responsible for yourself, but also be a good example to your classmates. You know, come and work hard and get your work accomplished. You know, that's the goal here is to come out of here with knowledge education, you know, some uh, and a neat piece of artwork. And everything that we do in sixth grade ends up in seventh grade art as well, and we have to continuously apply that. So by the time you get out of eighth grade art, if you take art all three years in middle school, and if you have me as your art teacher all three years in middle school, you will be able to draw things when you are done with this. You'll be able to paint things. You'll be able to think about how to plan your work. Some people that I see at open houses, the parents who are my former students, and tell me about the projects that they still have, and they're grown adults, and they're like, I still have my car project. And so you should ask your parents the same thing. Uh, and if they've got any of their art projects that they may have made in middle school or in elementary school. And I'll bet you somewhere there is uh, because if you put some effort into these things my students have uh, succeeded a lot and they have made some great pieces of artwork over the years and it just lets you go back and look at what you made and when you're an adult and compare that to if you're still working and you know making art <coughs> or you, even if it's just a pastime or you design t-shirts or you know, uh, it, all of that is is an art form, and so watching people take their art skills from sixth grade through eighth grade, many of my students go on to high school art, and many of them in college as well, and <clears throat> just seeing how their skills uh, advance over the years is very satisfying, and plus I'm sure it makes them feel good too, that they're, you know, they had an idea, they wanted to be involved in the arts and and they have pursued that idea and become someone very successful at it. So, uh, you know, don't let anybody tell you you can't make a living in art. And that's a bunch of baloney. You can make a living in art, but it's like anything else. You're probably going to have to work if you want it to succeed for you, right? Um, I don't like to tell people that especially young people, that their ideas are are crazy. Nobody ever can do that, you know, uh, because every time you do that, there's an example of somebody who actually succeeded. So I encourage kids to think big. I mean, why think little? 
but think big. But if you want to think big, you've got to have a plan. You need to think big and come up with a plan, a big plan, and stick to that plan. Sometimes, even when the, even when you don't think it's going to work out, you got to stick to that plan. And that is a lesson. That's not even just for making artwork, ladies and gentlemen. That's about life, right there. So. If you want to achieve big things, if you have goals, then you have to have a plan to achieve those goals. Otherwise, it's just wishful thinking. Alright, just continuously coloring more aqua green. I'm using up a lot of aqua green colored pencil, so it's a good thing that you can, uh, it, so this proves that you can get through uh, an entire uh, design unit and drawing unit with one 24 pack of Crayola colored pencils. Unless you sharpen them all completely out of existence or break them. So, uh, you know, if you treat your colored pencils with some love and respect, they will carry you to the finish line. And this is coming together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks good. So, I don't really try to assign homework to people, and if we were in a physical classroom and uh, this project was coming due, I will usually encourage uh, the students uh, on the final night before it's due to take it home and try to complete it. I really don't like students taking their artwork home uh, to work on it because they tend to slack in class then and not get their work done and then mysteriously of course things happen to the artwork when it's at home and then I have to endure some sort of my dog ate my art project um, you know <laughs> excuse and so I don't want you taking your artwork home until I tell you to uh, and then please take it home and if you must work on it because we've been short on time doing assemblies or other reasons or snow days or whatever then uh, you can continue to work on it but if we uh, are you know haven't had those kind of problems and you're just not getting the work done well then that's a whole other issue uh, if uh, you're working about uh, the videos here about 35 to 38 minutes long each time the videos are so we're only talking about working about 30 you know 35 to 38 minutes every session and so if you uh, you know aren't getting this done at that particular rate then you really need to think about your work habits um, and uh, so it is possible it appears to me at least at the rate that I've been doing on the video that you can get these projects done in 10 days now it may take 11 you know, you know sometimes I have to give students they work at different rates and there's interruptions to classes all the time and so, uh, in the physical classroom, uh, there would, you know, I may have to give you a day or two extra. That's why I say it takes between 10 and 12 days. But in this case, uh, we are pretty well done with the project on its 10th day of production. And I think that all started back even with the uh, setting up of the paper. So, uh, that's really quite rapid production. Now, I know I go fast, though. So, that's... Uh, just me. So we'll see where we're at at the end of this tenth day. Uh, people start showing me their photos of their artwork and also uh, emailing me. I'm sure about <laughs> how close to being done they are, or how much time more they need. So we'll see. Uh, but it's it's coming to a rapid close here uh, for the uh, drawing unit. 
and it's funny that these cars and checker the checkerboard you know is traditionally signals the end of a race so I think that's kind of funny now when we're doing that we're kind of looking at the end of the race or the end of the project at least and since it's a car the racing theme is you know appropriate Man, I am wearing out this poor aqua green. I hope it makes it to the finish line. Okay, well, we're making progress though with it, so I'm going to keep at it. I'm continuously addressing areas of little skip overs and white paper showing through my coloring. I really want to get that opaque finish to it, and so I get a it protects the paper and also gives you that really strong uh, contrast to the uncolored squares at this point. Okay, so that's looking pretty good there. I'm going to sharpen up again. Looks like my bottom row is done. Looks like my left hand column is all the way done. It looks like my row here is done. It looks like this row here is done. So really, uh, it can come together pretty quickly uh, if you are focused on your work, of course. Here we go again. Let's keep it sharp and keep it moving. That is a nice working point. All right. I'm going to go up to this portion right here, make sure my slip sheet's not filthy. Good. And then start working in this area. The uh, physical classroom. I really miss it. I'm hoping I'm back in there soon. I'm hoping we're all back together. Really, this type of learning is best done in person, in real life, I guess. I R L. I always wondered what that meant until all of this started. So, uh, yeah, it's best if we do these types of projects and this type of learning works best if it's in person. But, uh, you know. If this is being done as a makeup lesson, for instance, or uh, you are distance learning or e-learning, well then sometimes that's the only thing we can do. Uh, this would have been very helpful back in the day when we had what were called blizzard bags. And uh, a few years back we had uh, a lot of snow days. And kids missed, I, we all missed a lot of school. And in order to not have to make up more than one or two days at the end of the school year, uh, the governor at the time said that if we would do blizzard bags, which are lessons in our classes that would be equal to one class period if a kid did it, a student did it, then we could get credit for that each day and that would make up for the uh, number of days that we had to uh, be out of school and thus would have to make up at the end of the school year. So anyway, uh, we made all of these blizzard bags and stuff and they were complicated and they were big take-home packages and a lot of students never did them anyway and we really didn't know how to apply the grades on those as well uh, and uh, it was it just didn't really work out but if this would have been on our uh, this type of learning would have been more available at the time uh, then uh, that would have made a great blizzard bag uh, you know I could have just posted it on your Google classroom and let it go so, um, okay well all right well sorry about that interruption uh, the phone call is uh, from my mother's uh, social worker at hospice. My mother is afflicted with dementia and lives in an assisted living unit. Uh, she has Alzheimer's and they call me periodically to let me know how she's doing and I go and see her uh, once a month. So I try to shut the phone off and everything else when I'm conducting these lessons and somehow people or I just forgot to do that. However, uh, that brief interruption uh, is going to be fine because uh, we only got about five more minutes before the dinger would ring anyway so we'll just continue that on here uh, in this session and uh, keep coloring for another five minutes and then we'll uh, 
call it a day here on session number 10 and although I may not completely get this done on camera I will continue to work on it to get it done so it's available for uh, visual inspection uh, there uh, when we call the unit over with so and uh, that will be I guess uh, for this project at the end of this video now if you were able to get your project uh, done with the whole checkerboard effect in the background already and you uh, feel the need or desire I would pick out another color that shows up well against your existing checkerboard pattern and uh, start to fill in all of the the other blank spaces in there as well just you gotta pick a color that the car is not represented in the car or in the other background squares so that's how you gotta go about that um, and that would really boost your grade plus it really really makes the project look a lot better too so uh, but we have just spent 10 days and I work pretty quick and so uh, 10 days is a is a good session or a series of sessions in order to I get a project such as this completed and I do believe so let's just keep at it and uh, I'm going to just work for just a few more minutes here and we're going to call that the end of our session for the day and then we'll see where everybody's at on the projects and uh, that will be the end of the unit so like I was saying, if you haven't taken down your notes on drawing or you don't have them complete or they may need accuracy checks, you need to take care of that by uh, going back and examining the drawing lecture uh, uh, lecture and notes, okay? Uh, that's a video would have been about 10 days ago at this point. Uh, so you got to... Everything is in the videos. Everything you need to know about this class and everything you need to know about the projects and they're actually completely demonstrated for you right there in the videos so if you need to catch up on something then that's what you need to do is go back and check them out and pretty much they're all available on YouTube as well that's where we post these links from okay I think I might uh, do just a little bit more here for this session and then I think our about 38 minutes of class time that we use every day in production is about up there so we'll uh, be closing it up here for probably the day I'll touch this up and clean up its opacity issues that's pretty good um, and the rest of this is just pretty much straight up squares I got four to go and so I will uh, address those four squares um, off camera but so far uh, this has been a good uh, project and this has been a good work session so uh, except for the phone call in the middle of it all which uh, was only a few minutes long okay well it's been uh, a good session today so have a nice day and uh, we will check this out uh, when we get ready to grade it have a nice day